We do not have a child. We've been married for six years now. I've had three miscarriages so far. Yes, the man of God continued praying for us and he prophesied to me also and told me that before the end of this year, I was going to conceive. And for sure, it came to pass. And um, I'm actually, it's been two months now. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. God has given us one kind of blessing or the other. When you woke up this morning, it is not because you prayed last night. It is because God allowed it. It is because God watched over you. David said, I slept and I woke up again because God woke me up. The psalmist said, has he not been the Lord on our side? When the enemy came up to eat up our flesh, where will we be by now? He said, our soul escaped like a bed from the nest. And it is because God has allowed it to be so. And there comes a point in your life where you have to acknowledge that who you are, where you are, and what you have. It is God that gave it to you. Hey. Who you are, where you are, and what you have. It is God that gave it to you. Whatever it is you have, it is because God gave it to you. Amen. And when you come to the point where you realize that it is God that has given you what you have, you do everything in your power to defend it. You do everything in your power to fight for the survival of what God has given to you. Scripture says that the devil cometh not or the enemy cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so the mission of the enemy we are contending with is to make sure that what God has given to us, he steals it. If he cannot steal it, he destroys it. If he cannot destroy it, he kills it. My question to you this morning, will you continue to allow the enemy to steal your blessing? Will you continue to allow the enemy to make a mess of your destiny? You have a portion in the Lord. You have a blessing from the Lord. You have a destiny given to you by God. And the power lies within you to defend that destiny. To defend that blessing. To defend that ministry. To defend that calling. To defend that spiritual parents God has given to you. If you hear me shout, I hear you. Your portion. Your portion represents four major things in your life. The first thing is your destiny. Your destiny is the place of honor in your life. The place where God has set you for people to realize that, oh, he's a police officer. Oh, he's an army general. Oh, he's a footballer. Oh, he's a pastor. Oh, he's a retired banker. It is your place of honor. That is your calling. That is what God has anointed you. That is the purpose why God sent you into this earth. It becomes your portion. So each and every one of us will have a portion in God. It is called destiny. Say destiny. Amen. Destiny is a place of honor. Amen. How do you come to the place of honor? You come to the place of honor on that day when that man together with your pastor stands in front of the altar and your father puts your hand in his armpit and walks you on the aisle and you come together with your husband or with your wife and the man of God joins you in holy matrimony. That day becomes your day of honor. Yes. And therefore, when you become married, it means God has sent your destiny into a place of honor. Amen. And you have to do everything in your power to defend that marriage. Amen. Many a times, we become so familiar with what God has given to us. Amen. And we end up not protecting what God has given to us until we lose it. Amen. Until we have lost it. Number two, your portion represents your gift and your talent. The Bible said the gift of a man will make room for him. And it will present him before great men, great women, 
prince and princesses. So everyone that God has created, there is a talent in you. Everyone that God has created, there is a gift God has put it into you. When I was a young boy, because of the talent that was hidden in me, which I didn't know and nobody knew, people used to say, this boy is a witch. This boy is a witch because he is able to predict and say things that are able to come to pass. And therefore, because I was too small to be manifesting what I was manifesting, they concluded in their physical wisdom to say, he is a witch. Amen. Amen. But that was a gift. That was a gift that is going to be a blessing to many nations so many years later. Nobody knew it, but it was already there. There is a gift God has given to you as your portion, as your land, as your plot, as your ground for you to tilt. And the Philistine is always available to fight you on that field, to take that field from you. And you must do everything in your power to protect your gift. Oh, protect your gift. You must protect your gift. Bible said Reuben was cursed by his father. The curse did not necessarily start during the days of Reuben, but the sons of Reuben, the descendants of Reuben, began to suffer. And they were, not, they were not living long. They were dying before their time. Up until Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 6, where God brought in another man of God. God brought in a man of God he has ordained and anointed specifically to solve the problem of the family of Reuben. And I believe that in this end time, I am one of the generals God have anointed to deal with family barriers and family foundation. The Bible said Moses came on the scene. He went into the family of Reuben and he said, let not the men in the family of Reuben die. Let them not die anymore. Let them live. And that was the end of the story. The curse was broken. The barrier was broken. What is the barrier in your family? Are people dying before their time? Are you working very hard, but you can't find meaning to your life? Are you connected with great men and great people, but none of them have the pleasure of helping you because of a spiritual barrier the enemy has placed in front of you? Are the women in your family very beautiful, but none of them have the sense of good marriage? It is because the enemy has placed a spiritual barrier in front of them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't need to die. You don't need to drink poison. You don't need to visit a witch doctor in order for your deliverance to come. Right here in Lusaka, God has anointed this church. God has anointed this altar. God has anointed his servant for this specific problem. To deal with family foundation. To break the barrier in your family. And I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you for these three days, the 1st of February, the 2nd of February, and the 3rd of February. Be my guest, and you will live with a testimony. Mama, God says it is not your time to die. God said he has refused you from coming to where he is. He said it is not your time to die. He has refused it. He said, because in the realm of the spirit, I saw your spirit going into the heavens. And I saw you standing before the throne room of God. And God said he has asked you to come back because it is not your time to die. It is 100% true. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says, increase your prayer. Because your time for him to turn your life around has come. I saw you were on a road and the road where you were... It was like a desert. It was like a desert. You were on a road. Everything was dry on your left. Everything was dry on your right. But God said he has commanded you to turn around. And you are coming back to the life you used to have. And better than the life you used to have. I don't know what has spoiled in your life. But God said things are about to turn around in your life. On the condition that you pray very hard. God bless you. Brenda. In the realm of the spirit. I saw money coming into your hands.
And every money that comes into your hands, I saw the money flying with wings away. And God said, this is how it has been programmed for you. You'll never be able to buy a car of your own. You'll never be able to make any investment of your own. You'll never be able to buy a property, a land to say, I'm starting a foundation and I'm believing God for money to build. You'll never be, to be able to do anything meaningful with your life. And the reason is because there is a spirit that has been assigned to ensure that every money that comes into your hand, you do nothing profitable with the money. God says, I pray and I cancel it. Yes. From today, as I break that spell, you buy a car of your own. Next year, you buy a plot of your own. Yes. If you shouted amen, the same grace will work for you. The same grace will work for you. I said, the same grace will work for you. Henda, come. Come. Okay, stand here. Stand here. In the realm of the spirit, I saw you during your school days. I saw you during your school days and there was somebody that was meant to enter into a relationship with you and marry you during your school days. But I saw something that looked like a ring, a marital ring, a golden ring. It fell from your face during your school days. It fell from your face during your school days. And God is saying in your family, there is a demonic covenant with a marine spirit, water water. There is a demonic yes. covenant with a water spirit. And every woman in the family, even when they enter into marriage, they come back. Uh -huh. yeah. Even uh -huh. when they enter into marriage, they come back. And the reason is there is a spirit husband from the marine world that has put in ring on every woman in your family. Not only women, but even men as well. Even men as well. The Lord says today, I should take back the ring and put on your face. Amen. Other than that, the only thing you'll be experiencing in terms of relationship is people who are already married. People who are as old as your father who will be coming your way to propose to you. But as you stand on this altar to sing for God, yes. such a curse cannot permeate in your life. Amen. I said such a curse cannot permeate in your life. Yes. Amen. Now, I saw an arrow. Lukundo, your baby, is it a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Come. I saw an arrow. I saw an arrow. How old is the baby? Ten months. Not even one year. Come, let me break the spirit of death over the baby. Lukundo, I see this baby vomiting and I see life coming out of this baby. And the reason is because there is an arrow that has been thrown into the life of this baby. The Lord says, if I don't pray to deliver this baby today, this baby will die. Because I see people seated on a canoe. You know canoe? Yeah. You know canoe, the traditional boat. Yes. I see people seated on a canoe with a driver who is holding a stick and is paddling the stick. And they are going very far into the dark world. And that is the spiritual world that dead people go. And I saw this baby seated on a canoe going very far from us who are in the living. And God said, if I don't pray to divert it, this baby will die. The Lord is saying to me, within the last three months, yes. eh, within the last one month, there's been a severe attack of sickness over him. Eh? Last week on Friday, I was at mom's. I came out on Monday. And the other week, the last month of September, I was in UTH for three days. Ago. For this baby? Yes. You told me? No. Are you sure? No, Papa. I but didn't. why didn't you tell me? When you have a father like this, this is the sermon I was preaching about. Yes. There will be a blessing in front of you. But you will not utilize the blessing. If you can carry your sick child to UTH and you have a prophet in your life, what will prevent you from sending a message? Help me with prayer. The Lord is saying to me, the reason why you have not informed me because George, Prophet George, you are in contact with Prophet George. Who is praying for you? Who is Prophet George? Um, uh, someone just um, introduced me to him. Someone introduced you to him. He's a prophet. Yes. He's a prophet. Yes. Say Jesus. Yes. In fact, you are talking about UTH and moms, but the Lord is saying in the past in the past 30 days, exactly. this boy has been admitted three times. Uh, you've taken yes. her, him to the hospital three times. Yes. You've taken him to the hospital three times yes. in the past 30 days. And it is all because of your encounter mm. with a man who is not supposed to be part of your family. Oh. 
You have opened a door you are not meant to open. Oh. Let me leave it like this. Let me leave it here. So it doesn't look like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to do. Amen. And it is not, let me make it clear. Let me make it clear. It is not because the name I have mentioned, the man is not a true man of God. No. Far be it from me to be that kind of man of God. To judge, to say this one is from God. This, even when I know what I know, it is not my ministry. So I'm saying it again. It is not because the name I mention is not a true prophet of God. But it is because of lack of discipline. That God will not even listen and answer the prayer of another man of God. You will go behind the scene and visit and you will lay his hands. And your father will come and he will also lay his hands. God will not answer that prayer. That is the main reason why. That is the main reason why. I don't have a problem with you visiting any pastor. But sometimes you should have let your father. You should have let your father. Give me oil. Give me oil. How is the baby now? How is the baby now? Sorry? Much better. much better. I pray for you that things will return to order. Amen. I said things will return to order. Amen. I prophesy sweetness in your marriage. Amen. I prophesy divine health for your son. Amen. He will not die in the name of Jesus. Amen. I break the spell of death. Amen. An angel of the Lord has given me a key. Thank you. And as I received the key, I saw myself standing in front of a door. As I opened the door, I saw everything inside the door very dark. And I saw a coffin with this young boy lying inside the coffin. And God said, I've given you the key to deliver him. Amen. And therefore, as I pray for him, yes. as I pray for him, he will not return to the hospitals. Amen. I said he will not return to the hospitals. Amen. I said he will not return to the hospitals. Amen. If he returns Jesus. to the hospital, Jesus. because he's going for under five. Uh -huh. Thank you. Not because he's sick. Shout fire. fire. Shout fire. Shout fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. As I pour this oil. What's his name? Brian. What's his name? Ryan. Ryan. As I pour this oil on Ryan. I've secured your life. Thank you. And I've preserved your life. Thank Amen. You. When death uh -huh. takes hold of something. Exactly. Life cannot take it back. No except Jesus. Exactly. And in the name above every other name, Jesus Christ. Yay! Yeshua Hamashiach. I snatch you from the hands of death. Yes. I snatch you from the hands of hate. Yes. You will grow. Yes. Strong and fit. Yes. You will run around. Yes. You will be active. Yes. And you will be very, very vibrant. Thank you. Thank you. You shall not be sickly, Brian. Receive life. Receive life. Receive life. Yes. Receive life. Yeah. 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 Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The same grace that is answering for people can answer for you. Amen. Can answer for Ryan. Amen. It can answer for your marriage and your finances. Amen. If it is not answering for you, then there is an error somewhere. Amen. And I've corrected the error. Jesus. By the Holy Ghost today. Amen. Hear my voice as your father. Amen. And you will laugh in this life. Amen. 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 Clap your hands for Jesus. Ah, hold on. Somebody has an eye problem. Your left eye. Your left eye. There is something on your left eye that is paining you. Come. Like this, like a stone. Like something has entered your eye. How does it do you? And it's, it's reddish and it's itchy. It comes out from the eye. A yellow staff yes. comes out from the eye. Yes. Is it the right eye or the left eye? It's the left one. Put your, put your hand on your left eye. Father, I pray. Yes. Go! Spirit of blindness. Yes. Go! Yes. Go! 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 Fire! In Jesus' name, from today, your eyes are healed. What does cartridge or something? What, what does it mean? Cataract is in English, but in local language we call it Kamukombwe. What is Kamukombwe? Kamukombwe. It sits on the eye, bringing blindness. Father, I remove cartridge from her eyes. You will see clearly. Yes. You will not go blind. Yes. In Jesus' name. Put your hand on your eye. I decree and I declare. You will see clearly. Your eye will not go blind. I break the curse. I break the curse. I break the curse. In Jesus' name. Have you bought a plot? You have bought a plot. Have you finished paying? 
Yes, I did. You finished paying? Yes. Papa. You bought it this year? No, that was, I think should be 2015 somewhere. 2015. There. Where is the plot? In Chongwe. In Chongwe. There's another plot God is going to give you Amen, Papa. in the city of Lusaka. Amen, Papa. There's another plot God is going to bless you with in the city of Lusaka. Amen, Papa. Secure it. Thank you, Jesus. You are a woman of wealth. You are a woman of substance. But the wealth and the substance God is going to give you is not going to come from the salary you are receiving. It's going to come from the other businesses you do with your hand. Amen, and Papa. one of the businesses God is going to establish you to do is the business of real estate business. Amen, so plots will come, even though Amen. you don't have money to build. Plots will come. Buy as many as you can. Amen, Papa. Buy as many as you can. I bless you in Jesus' name. Come, let me give you good marriage. There is marriage smelling all around you. It is smelling all around you. Smelling all around you. Marriage is smelling all around you. You, you will testify. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. <sighs> marital favor. Marital favor. Marital favor. Marital favor. Marital favor. Marital favor. Even you, the Lord is saying, even you, you walk too much. You have too many pastors in your life. Too many papa, 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 papas in your life. So you realize that if by April, your marriage is not established, it is because... God doesn't know who is your father and who will bless your marriage. This one is your father. That one is your father. That, even people who are not in Zambia, you still call them fathers. Kofi, yes, the Lord is saying that there is something that God may see in her life. By her entering into this church, that something has been found again. Yes, sir. That if she will walk before God uh -huh. in holiness, yes, if she will walk before God and wait on God for the right man to come in her life, yes. God says yes. she will be an example in her family yes. when it comes to marriage. Yes. She will marry and she will settle down. Hallelujah. She will marry and she will settle down. I am seeing a ring and the ring is in a coffin and the coffin is under the earth. The Bible said Ruby was cursed by his father. The curse did not necessarily start during the days of Reuben, but the sons of Reuben, the descendants of Reuben, began to suffer. And they were, not, they were not living long. They were dying before their time. Up until Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 6, where God brought in another man of God. God brought in a man of God he has ordained and anointed specifically to solve the problem of the family of Reuben. And I believe that in this end time, I am one of the generals God have anointed to deal with family barriers and family foundation. The Bible said Moses came on the scene. He went into the family of Reuben and he said, let not the men in the family of Reuben die. Let them not die anymore. Let them live. And that was the end of the story. The curse was broken. The barrier was broken. What is the barrier in your family? Are people dying before their time? Are you working very hard? but you can't find meaning to your life. Are you connected with great men and great people, but none of them have the pleasure of helping you because of a spiritual barrier the enemy has placed in front of you? Are the women in your family very beautiful, but none of them have the sense of good marriage? It is because the enemy has placed a spiritual barrier in front of them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't need to die. You don't need to drink poison. You don't need to visit a witch doctor in order for your deliverance to come. Right here in Lusaka, God has anointed this church. God has anointed this altar. God has anointed his servant for this specific problem. To deal with family foundation. To break the barrier in your family. And I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you for these three days, the 1st of February, the 2nd of February, and the 3rd of February. Be my guest, and you will live with a testimony. You said you almost died. Hey, hey, hey. Kofi. Okay, the woman is stopping Pastor Kofi from speaking because she says the attempt on her life to die is very sensitive one. So whether it is sensitive or it is not sensitive, the Holy Ghost is using the servant of God to break it. Yes. Because in this church, unless you are not going to die, if you are going to die and you come here, God will expose the devil. Yes, Mama, as I lift my hands over you, I break the spell of death. I break the spell of death. I break the spell of death. Come on, come out of her. 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 Put her down. Put her down. 
kitchen party. Kitchen party. Not only kitchen party, but a party as a whole. Party as a whole. Somebody, I've not prayed for you. Somebody will try to poison you spiritually and physically. Go for it. Go for it. I'm seeing you going for a party and everything at the party is looking white, white. And even you yourself, you are wearing a shoe that looks grayish and whitish. And you are going. And oh, even this one is gray. And you are going for that kind of a party. But I saw you being carried away in a vehicle towards UTH and you never came back home. So I'm not surprised you are saying the issue of your death is a sensitive one. Because they have not finished. They still following you and they still want to kill you. They still want to kill you. Is it possible? This, it cannot be possible. She cannot die. She cannot be poisoned. I said she cannot be poisoned. She cannot be poisoned. You know, people can put poison in food for you when they are spiritually powerful. They will just use their eye and throw it in, in, inside there. And that is it. You just die. Any kind of party you are about to go and you will be poisoned. I deliver you in Jesus name. Amen. Eh? You will not go to any party. Free. At this point, until I set you free, yes, you have decided God. not to go to any party. You see, this woman is a broken woman. She has gone through a lot. Mm. You may not understand the tears in her eyes, yeah. but she knows what I'm talking about. She says, even though today is her first Sunday in this church, she said she will not go to any party until I tell her to do so. Mm. What a wild child of God. Mm. What a wild child of God. Mm. Shake my hand. I've been in ministry since 2006. Yes. And the year God uh -huh. called me and I started my ministry is the same month I started my church in Zambia. Amen. Amen. So count it. 23 or 24 years if I'm not lying. I've not buried any church member. I've been in ministry in Zambia for five years. I've not also buried any elder, any pastor, any chorister. Any church worker, neither any church member. As I put my hands in your hands, the grace that works for me, yes, I cover you with that grace. Yes, the God that answers my prayer. Yes, I call on the name of that God. Yes, that He will answer this prayer and preserve your life. You will not die. In fact, what is going to happen from today is that anybody you consider as an enemy that you think of, danger will go to them. Anyone you consider as your enemy. Who does not wish you well and you think of how they are tormenting your life god says there is an arrow he has put in your hand and the arrow will go back to them the arrow will go back to them. praise the lord i believe you have been blessed by watching the voice of fire beloved we are located here in Lusaka, Stalilo Complex, along Greatest Road. Our meeting days are Wednesday, 18 hours, Fridays, 18 hours, and Sunday, we have our prophetic celebration service, 09 hours. Please, be my guest this coming week, and I believe you will also be the next person to testify to the glory of God. Now, very importantly, prophecy, healing, deliverance, they will all amount to nothing if you don't have Jesus as your Lord and your Savior in your heart. I want to lead you to accept the Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ, into your heart. So if you are not born again, please pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I welcome you and I accept you into my heart as my Lord and as my personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life and add me to your children. Satan, from today, I disengage myself from your relationship. I am now a child of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you have prayed this prayer, what it means is that you have now become a born again Christian. Please look for a Bible-believing church where you live, where you stay, and begin to go to church so you can be taught the Word of God to grow. But in case it has fallen on your heart to join our church, we will be glad to fellowship with you. 
God richly bless you. I will see you on our next broadcast. Amen. For everything you've done for me, I gotta stand and testify. This is my day to celebrate. For everything you've done for me, I gotta stand and testify. I gotta dance and testify.